So here we are with World Inspector in Disneyland Paris. Hi, nice to you. So uh, you said that we would be able to console that could successfully provide the intended educational experience. Uh, now that uh, both the Xbox 360 and the PS3 are also getting more successful in capabilities, uh, do you see yourself working with all three platforms in the future? Uh, you never know. Uh, certainly for, from uh, the perspective of Disney Epic Mickey, the game we're talking about right now, uh, it is a Wii exclusive. Uh, if there's any plan to bring it to other platforms, no one's told yeah, me about it. Because I was thinking that, um, for example, with Kinect, uh, you could do the finger paint with some brush paint, right? Oh, sure. You know, look, from a technical perspective, now there's, there's no reason why we couldn't do this game on other platforms. Uh, that wasn't true when we started, but now there's no technical reason. But, you know, the fact that you can do something doesn't always mean that you will or you should. Or, uh, there, and like I said, there are no plans right now. I, I, I love working with Nintendo, uh, and uh, I'm really happy with, uh, with this as a Wii exclusive. Okay, see. Uh, characters in Epic Mickey don't talk much. Instead, they make these things like sounds. Uh, was that decision based on what you said about sounds? In a major part of games, did you want uh, to make gamers complete the characters using their own imagination? Well, certainly uh, it was part of, of asking players to fill in the blanks. That was that was a part of it. Um, but, uh, but you know, there, there, there are other factors here. There is a, a classic game convention uh, in, in uh, you know, Japanese role-playing games and in platforming games and in, in console games in general of, uh, uh, you know, we call it the bark text solution, you know? It's like characters go, ah, and then you see, you read a bunch of text. Uh, there, are just, there are a lot of reasons. I wanted to, to make the game feel a little bit more like an old school kind of uh, role playing game or, or, uh, or platforming adventure. And so that's just one of the conventions. See, so um, boss fights, I bet that'll be pretty interesting. Uh, assuming there's a trigger spoiler alert, could you walk us through the boss fight of your choice? Uh, wow, I really do want players to discover that for themselves. Uh, about as much as I really want to say. Is there anything at all about it? I'm, I'm happy to talk about boss fights. Yeah, in, in general, the, the thing that I'm most excited about about the boss fights in this game is uh, is that unlike any other game that I know of, you can you can decide how to interact with the bosses. It, it's, I really wanted players making their own choices about how to interact with stuff. So you can defeat the bosses in battle, or you can befriend them. You can actually uh, give them what they want. You can turn them into friends. You can do all sorts of stuff with the bosses that, that I think players would find a little unusual. And, and um, that is going to have an impact on how the game plays out, how the end game uh, uh, works for you. Uh, it's, it's largely dependent on how you interact with the bosses. See, so uh, did I understand correctly that if you use more thinner than paint, you'll be denied access to additional quests? Um, it's a little bit more complex than that, but uh, but yeah, basically that's true. So uh, if you want to explore like uh, the actual 100% of the game's content, you have no choice but both things. Oh no 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 not at all not at all. Uh, every choice has both a reward and a cost. Okay, so if you play through uh, using mostly paint, helping everybody you can, restoring the world, there are some quests that you're never going to learn about. There are some uh, uh, rewards that you can't so get. There are additional quests that are unique to thin and unique to paint. It's a little more so complicated than that, but, for, but, but just to get the point across, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. So in order to see and do and get everything, you're going to have to play through at least three times. And you're going to have to change your play style each time. So you're going to have to go through and be the uh, efficient, you know, erase your enemies, get past obstacles in the easiest, quickest way, uh, which usually involves thinner, uh, erase the, you know, parts of the world to find hidden rewards and hidden rooms and hidden, hidden caves and things. To, to, to see if you're going to have to go through it once doing that, then you're going to have to start over again. We, we save your, your game state. So we save all your collectibles. Start again, play through as sort of a paint player, you know, helping everybody, making friends with everyone, you know, defeating the boss battles with kindness, you know, all that stuff, uh, and then play through in sort of a balanced way. That's the only way to see and do and learn about everything, do every quest. Your play style really does matter, you know. You gotta play it through a bunch of times differently to see and do and get everything. I see. So, Mickey is a big boss for cartoons, definitely. Uh, what about the rest of the gang, like Goofy or Donald? 
the way that you see me, I interact with versions of more of these iconic characters. Not in their own games, mind you, just see them, them well. Uh, some of Mickey's pals will show up in Disney Epic Mickey, but maybe not in the way or in the form you expect. Yeah, no, all about uh, Robot Donald, but uh, I'm yes. just if we in the future we get to control some of them. Uh, well, not in Disney Epic Mickey, I don't mind saying that. Uh, you know, you never know what the future's going to hold, though. So right now, uh, that, you don't play them. But you can learn more about them, actually. We, uh, we've got uh, a series of Digicomics uh, that we have on iPhone and iPad app now, uh, where you can read six uh, stories uh, that talk about uh, the wasteland, the world of wasteland before the thinner disaster before the blot showed up, before Mickey appeared, uh, and the, the the pals actually play a fairly significant role in those stories. So, if you want to know more about the pals and their their place in in Wasteland, uh, you can read the Digicomics and find out more about them. Okay. Uh, I noticed that the uh, U.S. Collector's Edition is already available to the pre-order, but there's no European collection of Collector's Edition is on Amazon. Uh, is there reason specific availability for the Ace of Thousands D box? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask someone about that. I don't know. Because I was thinking about getting the collector's uh, edition, but I can't see a pal edition uh, anywhere. News, news to me. Uh, I, it's too bad because the, the vinyl figure, I mean, the, 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 the collector's edition is pretty cool. It comes with a, a vinyl figure, the uh, five inch Mickey army that I, I just love. I, mean, I hope you can get a copy. Yeah. Um, one last question, and this is going to take us somewhat away from the point, but it's time to ask. Uh, what's your take on their sexual revolution? <laughs> uh, you know, I. Wow. Sorry. Um, I, I, I'm really excited, actually. Uh, you know, it's, it'll be the first time I get to play a Deus Ex game without knowing all the secrets. I know we haven't seen much, just a few uh, screenshots and uh, trailers and something, but uh, do you think uh, is that what you would pretend if you would go? I have no idea. I don't know anything more than you do. Uh, I've seen what they've shown on uh, the press and what they've shown at, at trade shows, but uh, uh, you know, I work for Disney now. I, I, I have nothing to do with the creation of the Deus Ex Human Revolution, but what I've seen looks really cool and I can't wait to play it personally. Okay, then uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you for your time. That was my pleasure. Thank you.